Hello guys and welcome to this video about factors affecting decisions to extract a truth, okay? And of course that goes beyond the factors considered extraction criteria, alright? Which you already know, so the uh, fracture of roots extending beyond the alveolar crest or deeper than the alveolar crest is a factor uh, for extraction. Uh, failing endodontic treatments can be a factor. Um, uh, prosthetic reasons can be a factor. Uh, marginal bone loss to certain levels can be a factor as well. And basically all those factors were already described by the books. Now we need to understand factors that will compromise the prognosis of the teeth if we are willing to be conservative, all right? Because sometimes we have decisions to take just like in this radiograph here on the uh, right side of the screen. So now we have the central incisor with endodontic treatment. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, periodontal ligament space widening, but then there is distal bone loss, uh, and that's actually a horizontal bone loss, so the level of the alveolar crest is actually decreased. Can we be conservative or not? Well, actually, not only by this radiograph we can tell, we need also clinical information, right? But then there is this article from Gustavo Avila and collaborators published in 2009 in the Journal of Periodontology that I would like to recommend to you guys because they developed a classification about uh, how to assess this decision, okay? So how to assess the factors for you to have a very good decision regarding uh, whether or not to extract the tooth or uh, about the prognosis of the tooth if you are willing to keep this tooth, okay? So this classification can also be used to assess the long-term prognosis of the teeth, okay? So uh, then there are six levels described by the authors. The first level is the patient's initial assessment. In this classification, they are using colors, just like a traffic light, okay? So, green color means that the long-term survival is favorable. Yellow means that, uh, you know, proceed with caution is recommended. And then the red color means that the long-term survival is unfavorable, okay? Now, uh, let's understand a little bit. In the first level, they, are, they have some categories like patient expectations. Take a look at this. They start with patient expectations. So green light would be if the patient is willing to save the tooth, whereas red light would be if the patient is willing to extract the tooth. So take a look at this. We have a red color here uh, because of the expectations of the patient. Okay, The patient wants to extract the tooth and that will affect the, the treatment outcome also. Okay. Then the treatment expectations, if it's short term or long term, uh, if aesthetics are involved, th then uh, it's a yellow color. If, there, if aesthetic area is not involved, then green color. You know? So finances, if limited, then it's a green color because you try to keep the tooth. If it's yellow, then uh, if it's adequate, then it's yellow color you know? because you still need to, to assess the other factors as well. You know? So this is still multifactorial. But then you have, uh, for each category, you have a way to define some, some colors. And then at the end of the, the assessment, you will have a decision to take based on the number of uh, colors that you got. So, for example, uh, three red colors would mean uh, extraction is recommended or likely recommended. Okay. Whereas, uh, well, or two red colors and two yellow colors, this would also uh, be a recommendation for extraction. Okay. And then uh, yeah, I really recommend you guys to take a look in this article because uh, th there's uh, other criteria as well for, for green colors and yellow colors, all right? But just for us to understand the factors that are uh, leading the authors to describe this classification, so we have the first level, which is the patient's initial assessment. So patient expectations, uh, treatment expectations, aesthetic finances. And then the second level, we would have the severity of uh, periodontal disease, okay? So probing depth, if it's greater than seven millimeters, then this is red color, okay? So then you add another red color that goes for a worse prognosis of the tooth, okay? Then mobility, if it's grade three, then you guys already know that this is red color, okay? So that goes for red color, all right? Uh, grade two would be yellow color, and then grade zero or one would be green color, all right? So long-term survival favorable. Then recurrent periodontal abscess, okay, if there is not, then green color, if there is, then red color, okay, so very important. Bone loss, marginal bone loss, if it's uh, more than two-thirds of the root, then it's a red color as well. And, the, and any bone defect morphology, this would also uh, be affecting the classification, okay. Then we go for the third level, which is the forcation involvement, okay, and then uh, there is a classification in which uh, the class 3 of the classification from Hempeg and collaborators 
would be when you can actually trespass with the probing uh, horizontally defurcation, so from buccal to lingual, because you have the, the bone defect uh, throughout the buccal lingual width of the furcation area. And this is a red color, of course, because this is actually a worse prognosis, okay? Uh, then you have the interproximal bone level to furcation entrance, okay? So if it's below the level, then of course it's a red color. Root anomalies, this would go for a yellow color, so you would need to add a yellow color to to your points, you know, to your table of points here. Uh, of course, going towards the decision to extract or not, right? And then uh, financial concerns also. And then we go for the fourth level, which, which would be etiologic factors, okay? So uh, presence of calculus, all right? So uh, if yes, then it's a green color, actually, because, uh, you know, you could treat that. Uh, surgery is compromising the bone dimension. Periodontal retreatment, okay? So if it's... Uh, if there's not, then it's green. If it's recurrent, it's yellow. And then if it's refractory, then it's a red color, of course. So root proximity and then root canal therapy, right? So if there is a failing endodontic treatment, then it's a red color, of course, all right? Then we go for the fifth level, which is restorative factors. And then uh, the questions are, do we have faulty restorations or fractures? And, and then, of course, uh, if we have, then uh, especially if it's non-restorable, then you'd have a red color. If you have extensive caries, then it's a yellow color. And then the crown root proportion as well, okay? So if it's uh, less than one per one, then it's unfavorable as well. So that, that's a red color as well. And then post and core uh, required. If you need post and core, then you already have, only by that, you already have an additional yellow color, all right? So take a look how important is the presence of posts, all right? Because the prognosis is worse for the future, okay? The, the long-term prognosis of teeth with posts is uh, smaller, is shorter than, than uh, teeth without posts, of course, okay? And even other determinants are described by the authors. So smoking, systemic conditions, use of biphosphonates, and the clinician's skill as well, because, of course, that's a factor that can affect the results, all right? So uh, let's see the main factors described by the authors uh, in the conclusion, and then you would have posts, uh, long fractures and overhangs of restorations, interproximal bone loss, and even parafunctional occlusion. Uh, those would be factors uh, considered as main factors compromising long-term survival of restorations, even without being factors uh, necessarily related to the decision of extraction, all right? So I, I believe this is uh, cases like this one, for example, you guys are seeing the, this axial slice of a CBCT, and then we have a lateral lesion, right? A lateral hypodensor radiolucent lesion, and then what is the predictability to save this tooth, okay? So of course, uh, it depends again on, on all these criteria, and you would use these, um, all these factors and then, you know, uh, see how many points you get at the end of the assessment uh, to help you in this decision whether or not to extract the tooth. Because we know that uh, many times we are going to recommend to the patient the endodontic treatments, the posts and the crown, and then the fruit fractures, right? So <laughs> that, that's why we should try to be conservative as long as we can foresee long-term uh, favorable results. If you guys liked, please hit the like button and see you guys on the next video.